couple of months ago, I began my classes at Chico State University. As I was preparing for my freshman year, I was able to find everything that I needed, except for a laptop. I'm not exactly very good at letting a dollar go for something, especially when I could get that something for or less. I scoured the internet for good deals on laptops, finding none that suit my frugal habits. Classes were only two weeks away and I was becoming desperate for a computer. Several days later, I saw an ad in the newspaper for a laptop that was being sold for only $600, and not too far from where I live. It was a very nice Dell laptop too, seeming odd that it was being sold for almost $1,000 less than the in-store posted price. I drove to the seller's address the following day. The house was further out of the city, butting up to a dense forest outside the house was an old Chevrolet, and a mess of old signs and various other vintage looking items. I rang the doorbell and a thin man in a flannel jacket came to the door. When I asked about the laptop, he looked almost relieved, and told me he'd ready to, he was ready to sell it immediately. Luckily, I did come with cash in my hand, and after proof of good condition, I went home with the new computer. Excited to have my first self-bought laptop, I powered it up and began uploading my own programs and applications. And uh, upon searching the hard drive though, I found a folder hidden away on it. Which was odd, because the man selling it told me that the memory was wiped clean and ready for a fresh start. The folder was titled 091710, presumably a date. I opened the folder, revealing six videos and three pictures. Curiosity got the best of me, and I decided to watch the videos. The first video was simply titled 001. The video was shot from a shaky camcorder inside of a vehicle, recording a woman walking out of a bar and getting into her car at night. After a couple seconds, the woman drove off, and almost immediately, the person recording the video began to drive after. The video ended after 24 seconds had passed. It almost seemed like the cameraman had been waiting for the woman for a while now. Come to think of it, I wasn't too alarmed by this at the time, just a little unsettled. I opened the next video file titled 002, and I assumed this was the next part of the video. My assumption was right, as it began with the camera on top of the console, facing out of the windshield, it was raining now, leading me to believe that this was a short while after the first video had ended. And I could barely make out that the vehicle two cars ahead of this one was the same car that the woman at the bar left in. This went on for an unsettling 47 seconds before the camera cuts out. I began to get a little nervous, fearing that this might take a turn for the worst. But as if I was watching a television show, I wanted to see where this was all headed. Not totally concerned yet, I decided to press on. The third video was, of course, titled 003. This was the one that got me officially concerned. The clip began from the same shaky hands as the first clip. It was now pouring rain outside of the car, and I could barely make out a figure in the fur coat with an umbrella walking to the front door of a house. I could only assume this person was, and whose house this belonged to. The figure entered the house and closed the door. The following stillness greatly unnerved me. The only thing that could be heard was the sound of rain dumping on top of the car, but after, after roughly two minutes of this nerve-wracking nothingness, the lights inside of the house cut out. Another minute or so went by before the camera was placed on the console again and the sound of a person exiting the car broke the stillness. After the car door quietly closed, another figure, this time hooded, could be seen walking towards the house. I began to feel a knot tightening in the bottom of my stomach as the stranger walked around to the back of the house. Whoever this person was, they definitely weren't supposed to be there. After another couple of seconds, the lights to the outside of the house had cut out. Now it was pitch black, and only the rain alerted me that the camera was still rolling. The video ended about nine minutes into the rain and darkness. I was now pretty sure this was not an innocent little project or anything of that nature, and I began to feel stupid for not checking this laptop seller's credibility. Was this person stalking the woman the same person that I met with earlier? Throughout the whole experience, I had a dormant thought in the back of my head to call the police, but I wasn't ready just yet. Reluctantly now, I began the fourth video, 004. It was dark again, but the rain had stopped, and I was left with only silence. Not long after the clip began, I could make out the sounds of footsteps on gravels, getting louder as someone was approaching the vehicle. The car door opened and the dome light went, was turned on and I could tell that the camera was now on the floor of the car, pointing up towards the roof. I heard some fumbling in the background, and suddenly a thump sounded from the back of the truck. An arm abruptly obstructed the camera's view, and a large tarp could be seen being pulled out of the car. I had only one scenario running through my head, and I hoped that it wasn't true. The person picked up the camera and put it back onto the console, and began to back up. 
They drove for a good three minutes before parking in the branched off road and exiting the car to work on the load that they were carrying. Six minutes after, the car was moved again to a different location and the camera was picked up and carried underhanded away from the car. And I could see now that it was the same shit bucket truck that was in front of the seller's house. I was about ready to call the cops on this creep when the camera turned towards the house. It was a completely different one than the one I had visited. I was a little relieved by this, though it didn't prove anything. As the fourth video came to an end, I was wondering whether or not I was prepared to see what would happen next. I could only hope that this was a prank, or at least had a happy ending. 005 began inside the house, and it was extremely dark, and the only thing I could make out was a figure that would occasionally walk in front of the camera. It was also quiet for the first few moments, minus the occasional barking of a dog outside. Eventually, a small sound started to appear. The small sound soon escalated to a loud, muffled scream. Shaking and struggling sounds became more apparent as time went on, as well as crying. A light abruptly came on and the camera was lifted and panned to the center of the room, revealing a beaten and bloody woman tied to a chair. From what I could make out, this was, in fact, the woman from the bar. The camera zoomed in on her face for what seemed like an eternity before stopping. I couldn't believe that this was happening. The original hope that this was a movie or something, like that had long been diminished, with only one video remaining. I was beginning to fear for my own safety. I locked my door, closed my blinds, and pushed onwards. I began 006 with a small hope that this woman was still alive, and that I could have saved her. The final installment of the horror show began in a bathroom setting. The camera was placed on the counter, facing a mirror in which I could see a door. The only sound I could make was a familiar sound that destroyed my hopes. Power tools. I sat in front of the screen for what felt like hours before the sound had stopped, more silence than heavy footsteps accompanied by what sounded like something being dragged. The doorknob turned and the door was pushed open. Out of the darkness, the rest of the house appeared a middle-aged woman dressed in what I could only describe as lab attire, sporting a respirator and a pair of long rubber gloves. This for some reason gave me a small amount of relief. In the reflection, a woman struggled to drag something to the bathtub. As she hoisted it into the tub, I could see that it was a large black garbage bag. I felt like I was dreaming. It was like watching a horror movie unfolding on the screen. She lifted the bag up from the tub, now empty. Except for whatever entrails that had still dropped out, she picked up the camera and placed it on the ground. Facing the tub, on the floor, in front of the bathtub, was an assortment of corrosive substances and several other empty containers. The woman began to dump the liquids into the tub, which was followed by an awful, awful noise that I can only describe as pop rocks mixed with coke. The video ended, and I was left bewildered and panicked. I finally opened the pictures. The first was a picture of a truck. The second was a picture of a girl tied up before she was beaten. And the third picture brought up a corrupted file notice. And maybe that's a good thing. I managed to keep the two pictures before I handed the laptop over to the police. I was reimbursed my $600 along with a bonus. Apparently the victim was the young girlfriend of the older woman's ex-husband. The older woman was arrested almost a year before, but was freed of all charges due to the lack of evidence, and the ex-husband was incarcerated instead. I guess this was the missing link. I hope this has solved an un any unanswered questions, although... I'm not sure who the man in the flannel jacket was, or how he got a hold of the laptop, or how he owns the same truck as a murder. I guess I'll just leave that... to the police. Now, this was very remnant of some early creepypastas we've done with electronics purchased over the internet. The concept is not, in any case, new here. Um, in fact, it's been done before, uh, but here it's done actually. It, here it's done pretty well. Again, even if it's done before, even if you know creepypastas like this exist, there are ways to do them better. Or there are ways to do them in a more unique manner. Most of the time, we come across you know copycats or you know similarities. Most of the time, they do turn out to be pretty bad. But over here, it was actually done very well. Now, as far as realism is considered, which is actually the most important part of this kind of a creepypasta, is as morbid as this is, it's an incredibly likely occurrence to happen. I mean, the chances are incredibly, incredibly slim, don't get me wrong, um, you're not going to find this you know, happening all, everywhere all the time, but someone could be willing to sell some really sick stuff secondhand, obviously not over eBay or something so public, and the way you would acquire this is through some low-key local listing, but an element like this could exist in society. I mean, some person, you know, people get their rocks off to a lot of weird, weird things, and if you have been a watcher of the Deep Web series, you most likely know that is a pretty strong case. So. You know, by no element is that out of reality. So it could exist, it could happen. 
Um, not to the extent maybe some of this uh, creepypasta went to, but for the most part it was in a realm of believability, which is very important to this kind of a creepypasta. Now, as far as the story went, uh, it was built up well, and at no point did I think it was either too short or it was too long. It's one of those creepy campfire tales, and it was handled, in my opinion, beautifully. Now, there were moments where the story got pretty weird, somewhat cringeworthy when we look at some of the reactions of the person watching, and even the content that you were overlooking was somewhat questionable, too. It almost seemed like some sort of Hollywood horror story, especially with the woman at the end with the hacksaw or the power tools and whatnot. And one of the things keeping it together, though, was just the raw detail and the imagery attached to each of the videos, 001, 002, all the way, you know, throughout and throughout. And that kept you intrigued and it allowed you to easily image what the hell the protagonist was seeing. And one of the really nice touches was there was some media attached. Uh, you might have seen it in the video, of course, it was the girl that was tied up. Most likely it's some people acting, and none of this is real. And like almost all creepypastas, it is not real, thankfully. Fortunately. And no one got hurt. But putting effort like this into these is very much appreciated. It never really went to the realm of unbelievability, and it never really kept itself so withdrawn that you wanted it to come out and come out of its, its shell and try to scare you, or give you some feeling of eeriness that you were just desperately craving for. Overall, it's good. Um, there are pe there are pieces of it that you know d d did stick out, but it is a good creepypasta. I really did enjoy this, and um, personally, if I was buying laptops over the internet, you know, it's it's definitely a real occurrence, you know. And I mean, I want to ask you in the comments below something else, not not how good the creepypasta or what you'd rate it. I mean that too, but what would you do if you bought a laptop over the internet and turned out this was the case with you? It's not impossible to happen. I mean, maybe that next laptop or tablet you may buy over secondhand stores, maybe. You know, that good deal? Maybe you'll find out why it may be a good deal in the end of the day. And it may not be a good idea. Good, good, good reason why, rather. So let me know what you would do in the comments below. This has been another episode of Creepypastas, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I'm out.